Kita sih contoh sini ya Mi. Yes. Misa. It's clear only that the elements are not seen or uh -huh. it's stopping. I... Yes, I'm going to show you where it ends. Okay, let me redraw another one here. We're going to just start afresh. I'm going to draw it on the single line here. I'm going to first write this. Sa can Muslims at Zanzibar ignore ladies this is here comes my this is maturity this is copper maturity now it's clear then i have is hg not mg then i have AG. Uh -huh. Okay, do you see from this potassium? Yes? Mm. yes? Up to where iron is. Up to where mm. iron is. Now, at that stage, this is what uh, follows from there. All of them react with acids. Uh, actually, dilute acids. That's why I do create can sulfuric acid to liberate hydrogen gas. They liberate hydrogen gas. Gas. Huh? All of them. So in your in your on your table, you rule from potassium up to where iron is. Okay. Then they react with sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid to liberate hydrogen gas. So whichever salt they get, if they react with sulfuric acid, they form potassium sulfate, sodium sulfate, calcium sulfate, and hydrogen what? Gas. Is it clear? Hmm? Mm. Now, when it comes to lead, for lead to react, When it comes to lead, what happens is that it reacts with only, only concentrated, concentrated hydrochloric acid. Only. only. Teacher, question. Yes. Why can't lead metal? Um, why can't we use lead metal in lead nitrate? In what? Lead metal lead in, in lead nitrate. No, we have a compound called lead nitrate, don't we? Okay, lead. in the preparation yeah. of lead nitrate. Now the condition is here. Mm. It can only act with the concentrated what? Concentrated what? Hydrochloric acid. Only the other acids like nitric acid oxidizes lead this lead is here lead has a behavior of converting instead of from lead two to lead four you get it lead mm. it can change state from lead to ions that's why they always put there to lead to ions and as a possibility of going to lead what to lead four. four so if you use any other seed like nitric acid it can convert this because we have seen that in preparation of salts uh, if you look at our B, whatever up here, there was a condition they had put somewhere. Yeah. Let me look for it. You bear with us from here. It is actually somewhere here. They say that nitric acid is not used for preparing this type of salts. The reason is it has a bit of oxidizing most metals to their own or to change state can change state of a metal from one position to another here nitrates cannot be prepared using this method because dilute nitric acid being an oxidizing agent does not react with metals to liberate hydrogen gas. hydrogen gas 
So if you want to use preparation of salts using a metal and a dilute acid, it must be only hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid. acid. Is it clear? And that's the condition they are put here, yeah. that salts from potassium up to iron, they are the only ones that react with sulfuric acid and what? Hydrochloric acid to give us a salt of sulfate or a chloride and they liberate hydrogen gas. Yes. So if you want to lead to liberate for you this gas, you must use concentrated hydrochloric acid. acid. Is it clear? Okay. If you use nitric acid, it can change state from lead two to lead what? Four. Four. Yeah. So those are some of the properties there. Now, the rest here from copper up to the end of the what? Do they react? They cannot liberate hydrogen gas. They don't liberate hydrogen gas. In simple terms, they cannot displace, they cannot displace a hydrogen from any acid, from any acid. The acid will just remain the way it is. If it's hydrochloric, it will just remain hydrochloric because hydrogen is very reactive more than any of these metals here. Copper, mercury, and silver. You get it? Yes? Mm. So that is one note I wanted you to write down. If you have written it, then... We can look at the heating properties of these sulfates. Uh, actually, let's start with the effect. Yes. What what of gold? What of what? Gold. Does it doesn't it does it liberate or it doesn't liberate? Where is gold in the reactivity series? There we have our table. It's Where the is, last. It is the last one here. Gold. A. What is the symbol of gold? A. A U. Now, if gold is the last, does it liberate hydrogen gas? It has no mm -hmm. ability of this displacing the hydrogen from the reactivity from the that metal. Okay, from the acid. Is it clear? Mm. Yeah. So when you are coming up with equations, you must write. An example here, they have told you what this thing does here. Mm -hmm. Here they are saying when copper reacts with hydrochloric acid, there is no what? No reaction, isn't it? And therefore, there is no observable change. Even silver, when it reacts with sulfuric acid, no reaction, and therefore no, because it has no ability of taking away the hydrogen. It can only react if this is a copper oxide, because the hydrogen has something it takes from the copper. But if it is a pure metal of copper, it can never react with this acid. Clear? Hmm? Yes. yes. Okay. So if that is clear, let's go and look at this heating of these salts. But endure, if you want to do chemistry, make sure you know how to write the chemical formula of any given compound, chemical formula. You must use the ion exchange properly for you to come up with these things. If you fail to write the compound, then you never see chemistry as your good friend. So here they are saying effects on heat on these salts. An example is carbonates. Carbonates. Ah, here there is a condition that says number one, potassium and the sodium carbonates are very stable and are not decomposed by what? By heat. by heat. They are very stable. They cannot be decomposed by heat. They 
But if the salts are hydrated, what's the meaning of hydrated? If the salt is hydrated. Huh? Hmm? What do they mean by hydrated? Hmm? Hydrated? Yes? If they say a hydrated salt, our equation, there was an equation we had last time and all people were dodging it. It is here. Let me show you that equation. People took off from the equation, I don't know. <laughs> that uh, give the name and the formula of the hydrated salt you know. People took off from that question. I don't know who answered. Yeah. Eh? Yes? Hmm? Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Maya. Yeah? Yes? You did not see the question? Hmm? I don't think the question was seen. It was seen? Yes. Patricia, did you answer the question? That says, write the, write, give the name of the formula of one, a hydrated salt, you know. Did you write it? Yeah. <laughs> when they say something is hydrated, like this one, potassium and sodium carbonates are very stable and are not decomposed by heat. Heat, even if you heat this salt, they will never change state. You get it? Now, when you heat the salt you know at home, that is sodium chloride. It's not a carbonate, but when you heat a, a, a carbonate of potassium, a carbonate of sodium, they will never change state. However hard you hit them, they will never change anything. They will remain white. If they are white, they are white. Now, if they say they are hydrated, hydrated means they have element of water in them. Hydrated. If you compare this with the, the hydrated or what? Hydration what? Salt, O-R-S hydration hmm? so this is the other one is horror horror hydration salt this one is a hydrated salt hydrated means it has element of water an example is this sodium carbonate this is 10 water the way you read this is like that sodium carbonate 10 water okay when you heat this salt when you hit this, this is what happens. They lose their water of crystallization. In such a process, salts lose their crystalline nature and become amorphous or powder. When they say something is amorphous, what does it mean? It has no shape, isn't it? Yes? Yes. Uh, we looked at an example of amorphous. Amorphous carbon is one of these whatever is there. So if they say something is amorphous, it has no shape. It is very, very fine powder. So this salt is crystalline in nature because it has water. That's why when we prepare, when we are preparing salts, we looked at the crystalline nature of a substance. It has an element of what? It has an element of what? Hmm? It has an element of water. We form the salts within water. We want them in a crystalline form. But if you want to remove the crystalline nature of this salt, you heat furthermore. When you heat, you will form, the water will go away and the salt will remain the way it is. Is it clear? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now you have known that when you heat potassium and sodium carbonate, they don't decompose on heating. But if they have water element in it, if they are hydrated, they lose the water. Okay? Questions will come. Sodium carbonate, 
sodium carbonate maybe 10 water was heat right actually right what you what state the observation right what you observe you there the only answer is there will be no observation but the water in a gaseous state will be given up you see vapor that vapor colorless vapor is for water water in a gaseous state but the salt will remain the same okay is it clear <clears throat> yes yes okay now they are saying here all other metallic carbonates all other metallic carbonates now here we have looked at potassium and sodium what about ammonia what happens they are also here on other metallic ions decompose upon heating to give number one oxide of the metal oxide of the metal and carbon dioxide gas so when you heat zinc carbonate it gives you zinc oxide and carbon dioxide gas so here you see the color of zinc is white but when you heat it turns to a yellow solid when hot but turns white on cooling and a colorless gas is liberated this colorless gas we saw how to test for it it turns lime water milk and that's carbon dioxide and that's carbon dioxide uh, i wanted to show you how this salt behaves i don't know if we can get it from here heating of zinc carbonate the image is not broken the image appears Now, this is the... So this is the nature. I don't know how to expand this. Let me look for YouTube here. Uh. Mm. Now, here is uh, do you see the what I'm sharing on the screen? Yes. Cynthia. Cynthia. Maya. Maya. Uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Okay. Take note of this. What's going to happen to this salt? Our zinc carbonate is white in color. Okay. The zinc carbonate here, this is nature, it is in a test tube. So this is the zinc carbonate we have. They have put it in what? In the test tube. So when they hit the substance, it is white in color. So if they say write or you state the observation, this is heat coming from down. You see what is happening to the solid? Yes? Yes. Now, this is, they are inducing a drop of lime water from the tip, from the top here. 
they want to see which gas is coming out of this test tube here. They have brought a drop of lime water. When you see this lime water, they have brought turning milky. You know the gas that is coming out is carbon. Carbon? Carbon what? To be what? Dioxide. Carbon dioxide. So let's continue. Ah. So when you continue heating, the ghost will come out. When it passes by this drop, now you have seen the color of this solid. What was the color at first? White. It was white. White. Then it turns yeah. Yeah. yellow. Now, if you wait for it to cool, if you wait for it to cool, this is what happens when it cools. You see, when you leave it to cool, the whiteness comes back. Okay? Yes? Mm. So, that is what happens there. Yes. That is what happens there. That uh, zinc carbonate is white in the color. When you heat, it forms yellow solids when hot, but turns white on, on cooling and liberates carbon dioxide gas, which turns lime water milk. So if they say a carbonate of X was heated, a state what was observed, white solids turn yellow when hot and turns white on cooling. Then you know that is an oxide of zinc that was there and carbon dioxide gas given off. Is it clear? Yes? Yes. Let me hope you are noting those observations down. Now here, they are telling us another observation. When you heat, this is lead. Lead carbonate. The other one was white. When, you, when it was there. On heating, it turned yellow. On cooling, it went back to white. Now, the behavior of lead carbonate is here. A brown, sol a brown residue when hot and it becomes yellow on cooling. And then the colorless gas is the final product from Okay? So let's look at the difference between these two. Uh, let me remove this. I put lead. Lead. I want us to take the difference between these two. Uh, So I want us to look at the difference between lead and the zinc. So here, what we have in this is no, this is a different one. This is a different one. Um, Let me get the one of lead carbonate. Now, this is the heating of lead to carbonate. I will show you the difference why they put this as a lead 2. So inside this test tube, we have lead 2. 
carbonate. They are trying to heat it. Then this other side, we have lime water. They are trying to test for the gas that comes out when you heat. So at this position, you see what happens to heat. When you heat, it turns brown. Then our lime water here was colorless at first. Let's go back a little. You see the color here? It was colorless. Now, when you continue heating the other lead, what comes out is the carbon dioxide gas and it's going to it's going to the lime water. What happens is that it turns milky. Then this one is turning brown. You see? Have you seen the milkiness there? Yes? Have you seen the milkiness? Hmm? Yes, yes, teacher. Hmm. Yes, if you have seen the milkiness, we are going back to our solid. So finally, this one has tested that finally here, we have seen that carbon dioxide has turned the lime water milky. That is what has happened. Now, after knowing the gas, we now come back to, to the solid and see what finally happens to the solid. What is the color there? It is brown. brown. Now we need to observe what happens. Does it turn, does it remain brown or it goes to yellow? Let's continue seeing when it cools. Now, finally, on cooling, this is what happens to the salt. Now, it's going to get it and cool. After cooling, this is the end product. It is what? Yellow. Yellow. Okay. So, this one is different from zinc. Zinc turns from white, then what? Yellow, and then from yellow, yellow it goes back to white. That's the behavior of zinc oxide. Okay? It is no longer mm -hmm. zinc carbonate. It has turned to zinc oxide. oxide. Now, when you heat lead carbonate, it goes to lead oxide, which is when hot, it is brown, isn't it? Yes. On cooling, it turns to? Yellow. Yellow. And then the other gas that is given off. So when they ask you for the observations, you don't lead the, the gas. Because when you are heating, they, gi they give you all ways of testing for those gases coming out. Okay. So this is the behavior of what we have seen there. Now, this one, we are going to stop on only these uh, carbonates. Then next time we shall meet, we shall also look at sulfates. So here, we are seeing this, that when copper two carbonate is heated, a black solid is formed. The black solid of copper what? Oxide. Copper oxide. So, and then the gas that is given off. The gas is carbon dioxide, isn't it? Yes. So you should know that copper carbonate is like that, but this thing has a mistake. If you look at copper carbonate, if you look at copper carbonate, let's look at it and we see copper carbonate. No. We have some delays in the network, but it will come.
So this is copper two carbonate. From the tin, as you look at it, is it white in color? No. What is that color? It's like greenish. It is greenish. Green. So here, in the uh, whatever, there is a mistake here. It's not white. White. It's, it is a green, green. solid. Okay. Mm. Okay. So let's look at this. So this is a demonstration of what happens when you heat copper carbonate. So this is a solid of copper carbonate in a test tube. It is not white, it is green. So mm. Mm. So when you are heating, the first thing you are doing is to test for the gas that is coming out. Then after testing the gas, you also note, you also note the color of the solid. Those are the basic reasons that's why you heat metal. So this is what's going to happen to our copper when you heat. So take note of that, that the solid was green at first. When you heat it, what happens is what you are going to look at. When it is hot and when it's cold. Now, on the tip of the test tube here, you have seen black, black color starting to form a little. Even at the bottom of the test tube, the blackness has come. So the final end product is that black color. So you see the green color is disappearing. Yes. So when carbon dioxide disappears from this solid, from this solid, the whole thing turns to black. That is an oxide of copper now. Then finally, carbon dioxide escapes to the atmosphere. So you have seen the final solid color. Do you see that solid? It's black. Yes. Black means that's an, an oxide of copper, which is contrary to an oxide of lead and an oxide of what? Of zinc. So that is what we have there. So that is what happens here. Now there is this salt that is very stubborn, ammonium carbonate. Ammonium carbonate. It decomposes to give ammonia. All types of gases are here. Ammonia gas is the first one, carbon dioxide gas, and then water vapor. This process of heating ammonium carbonate, what is the common name given to it that a solid has turned to gases? What is the common name they use? A solid turns to gas to a gas without changing to a liquid state. How do you call that process? Yes? According to Cynthia, when a solid turns straight to a gas, the process is called what? It is called what? Evaporation? <laughs> huh? Patricia, the process is called what? Liquidification? <laughs> yes. How do you call a process of which a solid turns to a gas? I don't know. Decomposition, I don't know. Uh, Change yeah, ah, that's the correct word to use. Ammonium carbonate sublimes to different gases. The first one is ammonia gas. The second one is carbon dioxide. The that's third one, decomposing. Decomposing means it is heat. Yeah. That's the action of heat on the substance. Yeah. But the whole process to which ammonium carbonate turns to a solid abruptly 
a, a solid turns to a gas is called sublimation. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, so even the water you have will be water vapor. Okay, then ammonia gas and this. So the process is called sublimation. Ah. Then when you heat a hydrogen carbonate, when you looked at hydrogen carbonate, we saw that hydrogen carbonates of, of sodium exist up to magnesium. The rest of the hydrogen carbonates do not exist. So here we are seeing the first one as sodium hydrogen carbonate. When you heat, it gives you a carbonate, sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide gas. That is what happens. But when you heat a carbonate of sodium, there, there is nothing that takes place. It remains like that. But when you heat hydrogen carbonate, it gives you sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide gas. Have you understood how, what happens when you heat carbonates? Yes. So if any question comes, you must be in position to answer. Okay.